I'm free. 
say from the top, I'm trading. I'm trading my sorrow. Trading my shame. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. Trading my pain. I'm trading my pain. Here we go, laying them down. I'm laying them down. The joy of the Lord. Come on and praise Him. Come on, you were created to praise Him. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm laying them down. Come on, lay it down. Come on, lay it down. For the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down. Joy of the Lord. Come on, let's say it again. I'm trading my sorrow. Come on, tell your sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down. Are you laying it down for the joy of Jesus, somebody say 
together for offering time we ask the deacons to come and prepare for the offering how many are excited to give on this morning amen we're giving into good ground all this morning I just feel the glory of the Lord this place how many of you feel the glory hey even if you don't feel it by faith he's here right now we got a feeling that everything's gonna be all right the blessing of the Lord we know it makes rich and it adds no sorrow with it Proverbs 10 22 once you have your offering in your hand, you're ready to give. Everyone should be giving, whether it's your offering or your tithes. If you don't have it to give in person, you could give electronically. Cash app, dollar sign, Faithful Church. Tithe the Faithful Church of Christ. Come on, just trust God on this morning. How many are willing to step out and trust Him? Trust Him in your giving. We want you to stand to your feet and repeat after me. 
there is no children's church or today after the praise team sings this last song we're gonna hear a word this morning how many come to hear a word come on look at your neighbor and say neighbor I need a word from the Lord and I know we're gonna receive a word from our pastor Pastor Lynch repeat after me as we give it to good ground This is y'all messing me up this morning. We believe God for a harvest of blessings in every area of our lives. We believe and declare God's word to be true. We believe God for spiritual, physical, and financial blessings. We believe God for breakthroughs and open doors we declare that we shall be the lender and not the borrower and that God will multiply and expand our territory in Jesus name we're going to ask our deacon hurt to bless the offering in Jesus name praise Lord everybody to God we come before you again to thank you for all of your blessings and while we're in the spirit of worship we ask you to God to bless us to give of our finances what we have we would not have had you not blessed us dear God and you said in your word you love a cheerful giver you also said to God that if we do what you want us to do with the money to share it with you that you open up the windows of heaven to pour out us a blessing we won't even have room to store it Bless us all with allowed to be used for the building of your kingdom. Bless those that have to give. Those who have not but have a desire in their hearts to give. Bless them in a very special way in Jesus' name. Amen. You're in the hands of our ushers in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come to praise his name. We come to magnify his name. He's an awesome God. 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 Awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praises to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. 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 He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He deserves our praises. He's our rock. He's our deliverer. In him will we trust. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Help me sing this song. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the
mistake right there. Praise the name, praise the name, praise the name of Jesus. Last time, here it is. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name. worthy of our praises, saints. He is worthy of our praises. We come for no other reason but to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. Because Jesus is the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you for life. Lord, we thank you for strength. We thank you, God, for being in our right mind. We thank you for the activities of our limbs, Lord God. We thank you for blood running warm in our veins, God. We come to lift your name on high. And we come to tell you thank you. Thank you for this day that you've made. A day that we've never seen before. A day that we'll never see again. But here we are, Lord God. This is the day that you've made. We're going to rejoice and be glad. We thank you for the opportunity, oh God, to come into the sanctuary. God, we're not at Mass General. We're not at Beth Israel, Lord God. We're not at Boston Medical, Lord God. We're not at Brigham and Women, God. We're in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. We're in the sanctuary, Lord God. God, if it wasn't for you on our side, God, we would have been dead in God, sleeping in our grave. But you gave us breath, Lord God. You gave us strength, Lord God. You gave us life. And so we're going to praise your name. We're going to praise your name. We're not going to let the rocks and the stones cry out in our place, Lord God. But we're going to praise your name. God, you are our rock. God, you're our fortress. God, someone in this room knows that you're our deliverer. Hallelujah. And so we're going to put our confidence and our trust in you. God bless us even right now. We thank you for the praise that went forth this morning. God, to lift our voice in harmony, oh God, and know that you're awesome. Oh God, to know that you're great, oh God. Oh God, we thank you that we can just tell you these simple words, thank you. God, as we're going into the word, your word is already blessed. Your word is already blessed, Lord God, and so... Allow your blessed word to speak to us right now. Some of us are in need of a word. Some of us are desperate for a word. We need to hear direction for our life. God, speak to us and give us understanding, Lord God. As you've spoken the word to me, Lord God, speak through your servant. Speak through your servant, oh God. Anoint afresh, Lord God, that there'll be clarity an understanding of speech, oh God. With simplicity, oh God, break down the good news of who you are to us right now. Help us, oh God, to see hope in our darkness. Help us to see healing in our sickness. Help us to see deliverance in our burdens, Lord God. Help us to see a way made out of no way, Lord God. Help us to see, oh God, victory in the face of defeat. God, speak through your word right now. Hallelujah. Oh, God, it will be sure to praise your name, God. Let your will be done right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We say thank you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Can we give God a praise before we take our seat? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's a great God, and he's worthy of great praise. From the rising of the sun 
to the going down. His name is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. We thank the Lord, amen, for giving us this opportunity to be in the sanctuary. Amen. There's so much happening right now. The Lord gave us this chance to gather in his name. Amen. I greet everybody under the sound of my voice in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank God for life and strength. I really do. The dead can't praise him. But here we are alive. The dead can't praise him. But here we are alive, alive. He gave us life. So many people went to bed last night and did not wake up this morning. And he gave us life. Lord, I praise you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I don't know what tomorrow holds. Tomorrow could be my number, but here I am right now. Able to tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah, he's worthy of the praises. He's worthy of our praises. Amen. In all that we do, it's good to give God praise. The Bible says praise is comely to the upright. Amen. God inhabits our praises. Amen. Bishop Hurst was here in May. He broke down the word inhabits. God lives in praise. God rest and praise. So if you're in a situation you need deliverance, a good way out of that is to get God's attention through praise. Through praise. God deserves our praises. I'm telling you, he's a great God. And he deserves all of the glory. I give him praise this morning. Amen. We give the Lord the praise for our minister. God bless you, Minister Bobby. God bless you. To our deacons, all of our deacons in the room. God bless you, deacons. Amen. To our mothers, God bless you, Mother Lago, Mother Smith, Mother Edwards. Good to see you, Mother Edwards. Amen. To amen, our sisters and brothers, our sister church, Refuge Temple, we thank the Lord for you. We are grateful for healthy fellowship, and we thank the Lord that we can lift up the name of the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. To Dr. Lynch, I think she's on her way or at some level of appointment to her. Amen. To my wife, God bless you, Lady Lynch, the blessing of the Lord. Love you so much. Uh, and to those that may be visiting for the first time or it's your first time in a long time, amen, at the Faithful Church, if you've been here more than five minutes, you're not a visitor, neither are you a guest, but you are family. And I pray that you feel the presence of the Lord in the room. Amen. Typically on dreary days like this, it shows up in our worship. But I thank the Lord that the presence of the Lord is in the room right now. Hallelujah. The sun doesn't dictate my emotions. The rain doesn't control my feelings. God deserves my praise. Hallelujah. He does. Amen. I want to leave just some announcements in your hearing. There's so much happening. Amen. And so I just want to leave just a few th announcements before we get into the word. Amen. This coming Tuesday and this coming Wednesday. Both services start at 7.30. We are blessed of the Lord, amen, to have Bishop Nathaniel Zalway from, amen, South Africa. He'll be with us. Excuse me, Liberia. Forgive me, Liberia. Amen. He'll be with us. He's a very powerful man of God. I'm excited for the word that's coming. Tuesday is going to be Bible study, amen, and Wednesday will be a revival service. So, amen, bring your dancing shoes on Wednesday. Bring your notebooks on Tuesday. Both days, you're going to be blessed. He's a powerful man of God. Amen. And I'm very humbled and honored that out of his busy schedule, amen, he thought it not robbery to come and see little old us. Amen. If you get to know him, you'll know that he is an international preacher. Amen. He has hundreds of churches under him in Liberia and across Africa. And the Lord has blessed him with a very special anointing. And I... I'm making my due diligence not to, um, you know, sometimes people use the pulpit for their own agenda, but I pray that this will never be the case here at the Faithful Church or at Refuge Temple, but the men of God and the women of God that bring the word of God are anointed of the Lord. And
and they have only one objective, and that's to bless God's people. Amen. Anytime the pulpit gets changed to something else, as my late Uncle Larry would say, uh, you prostitute the pulpit, and you allow the people to be um, destroyed because of what they're sitting under. But I, I'm telling you, you're in for a blessing from the Lord. Amen. So make it your duty to be here on Tuesday at 7.30 and also on Wednesday. Amen. I'm telling you, invite a family member, a friend. There is a blessing from the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the Lord. Amen. This past Friday, the marriage ministry had an event, paint night. Was anyone there on Friday? Was anyone blessed? I just hear a few folks in the room. We need more marriages at faith. The Lord bless the saints to get married. <laughs> Amen. I enjoyed myself. We had a wonderful time. Amen. We took time to just let our hair down and have a wonderful time in fellowship. I thank the Lord for Minister Bobbin and Sister Shahara, who are our coordinators, her first class in their presentation and, and in their execution of ministry. Marriage is such an incredible ministry that often gets neglected in church environments. And I often share that when I was engaged or dating, uh, there was no rule book, there was no handbook, there was no template of how to date there was no understanding of how to get engaged uh, at my home church prior to my marriage uh, the last marriage we had was 20 years before me so there was a huge gap of what it looks like in, in, in just that avenue of the sanctity of marriage and so I recognize from Genesis chapter 3 that one of the things that Satan hates is marriage he attacked Adam and Eve with intentions for divorce, with intentions of separation, with intentions of enmity and causing division. And if Satan did that back then, what do you think Satan is doing right now? He attacks marriage because happy homes make happy churches. Yes, I know this may be a new theology for some, but let me help educate you to make you recognize Satan's objective. If you're fighting and angry and frustrated at home, how do you think you're going to present inside the sanctuary? Oh, I love a silent church. Let's have a Selah moment on that. Amen. And we believe both at Refuge and Faithful, amen, in marriage being one time in the sense of uh, we don't believe in multiple situations happening. And there's, there's theology behind even that. If I'm angry, frustrated, disgruntled, disrespectful, and just very nasty in my first marriage, and I don't fix me, if I don't fix me, but I blame my spouse, oh, you know how Jacqueline is, that's Jacqueline. If I divorce Jacqueline and marry Sue, will Sue make me a better man, or do I make myself a better man? Oh, I wish I had a church to holler back at me. Oh, I, the reason why I say the Deacon Fenix is because we scrutinize the person that's divorced, but we don't give the support they need to be better. So I don't believe in talking about someone behind their back. Here we are in church. Let's deal with these things, right? Let's deal with these things. I, Audie Lynch, have to work on me. You can't change your spouse. I think some married folks know that. You can't change them, but you can change yourself. And so it's necessary to have these conversations in church because guess what, saints? If we don't have a healthy home and a healthy marriage, the world will indoctrinate our children what marriage is. If we can't have these conversations about healthy homes, then the health teacher and the gym teacher and the social studies teacher will teach your children what marriage is. And when they find out what marriage is, but it's not what we believe, you can't demonize them for what you didn't do. Oh, Lord, I wish I had a church to holler back at me. Come on, don't look at me like Alice in Wonderland now. One day, I'm going to have a grown set of people, Minister Bobbin. <laughs> but I, I'm very intentional as a leader to have specific moments to help us grow in the body of Christ. I don't want to come to church just to come to church. But I pray that our gathering together makes us better than who we were when we came through the door. That's all I'm saying. Amen. And so it's necessary that we had a time on Friday. And we have these 
events for marriages once a quarter, uh, sometimes even more frequently. And uh, I pray that more will be a part of it. If you're dating, engaged, marriage, whatever state you may be in, even if you're looking for the restoration of your marriage, amen, it's good to be in the company, not to do this by yourself. Amen. Amen. Uh, Friday, August the 30th, amen, the church will be in Worcester. I believe that the van is capable of taking a Worcester trip, so the van will be on the road. <laughs> The van will be on the road. I thank the Lord for incredible deacons who not only maintain the grounds, the church, but they also tailor to the other outfits of this ministry. Amen. And they're just the hands and the feet. They are the engine behind so much. And so, amen. August 30th is a Friday. We'll be in Worcester with Pastor Brooke celebrating her sixth anniversary. September 6th is the beginning of CEM. On Friday nights, we'll be here for our adult CEM, and that's going to be a little different this semester, so I'll sit tight. I'm excited to uh, open up this new chapter for CEM, and the only other announcement is Sunday, September 8th, amen. We're going to have our cookout outside in our back-to-school event, amen. I invite everyone that's here, come on to church, amen. It's going to happen directly after our morning service. We're also going to pray for our students. I told a sister on Tuesday that we would have that prayer this month but if anyone knows me if I don't have a secretary or my wife near me I will schedule a funeral a birthday a baptism and a wedding all on the same day and not know I did it so I gave that person the wrong date and when I told my wife about it she said we already have a service so September the 8th is the service where we'll be praying for our students our teacher our administrators our parents, amen, as our children go back to school this September, amen. That'll be September 8th, and then after our service, we'll have our back-to-school cookout, all right? Those are the announcements, amen. I pray that you got those in your mind, amen. I want to look at the word of the Lord. Let's go to the word, amen. In Ruth chapter number 4, I want you to look at verses 18 through 22. It's not in our notes, media team. The Lord just put this on me, so... We're going to be uh, navigating swiftly. Ruth chapter 4, verse 18 through 22. The Bible says, Now these are the generations of Perez, or some translation will call them Perez. Perez. But it's the same person. Amen. Perez begot Hezron. Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Aminadab. Aminadab begot Nashon. Nashon begot Salmon. All right? Not Salmon, but Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz. Boaz begot Obed. Obed begot Jesse. Jesse begot David. All right? I want you to just keep that in your back pocket. Just keep that in your back pocket. If you will turn your attention with me then to Deuteronomy chapter number 23, verse 1. Amen. We're going to walk through some scriptures today. And by the end of it, I hope it makes some sense. The Bible says, he that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy members cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. And we have a scripture that says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. What you have to recognize is the doorkeeper wasn't just the usher. The doorkeeper in those days of the temple was to stand at the door and check the private parts of the men that came in to see if they were circumcised. Or, according to Deuteronomy, to see if these men cut themselves because cutting themselves was also a recognition to mutilating their bodies for other deities. So other gods required blood sacrifice or some type of cutting sacrifice 
and they have made allegiance with other gods other than Yahweh, the true and living God. And so what this law was put in place to do is to keep people out of the sanctuary that didn't have a devotion to the true and living God. So they're saying that if you're wounded in the stones or your privy members are cut off, you cannot enter into the congregation of the Lord. It also says in verse number two that a bastard shall not enter into the congregation. And it's important to understand we oftentimes go to King James with the Webster's Dictionary. But the word bastard is not meaning someone born out of wedlock. It's somebody that was born under some type of incestry relationship. So something very devastating happened in the conception of that child where a family member violated another family member. And so there was incest. And so the word there means that if that has happened, you shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord even to his 10th generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. They say then also in verse number three that an Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord even to their 10th generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. So we see that Deuteronomy is laying down some laws of exclusion. That you're not allowed to come to church. You're not allowed to sit among the members. You're not allowed to worship God because of your background. Psalms 122 verse 1 simply says this. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I want to preach this morning from a very simple message. And the simple message is simply this. I belong here. I belong here. Amen. I belong here. Amen. I want you to help me preach it. Tell a neighbor, I'm glad you're here. I want you to look at them like you're angry with them and tell that neighbor, you were meant to be here. If that neighbor looks too mean, find a nicer neighbor. Say, neighbor, you were meant. You were meant to be here. You were meant to be here. You were meant to be here. Amen. I don't know if anyone in this room knows what it feels like to be excluded from something. I'm just wondering if anyone knows what that feels like. To feel like you shouldn't be invited to an event. Yeah, exclusion, exclusion is a real thing when you're excluded. And there's a burden that comes, a silent burden that comes with feeling excluded. You know, when people excommunicate you, and they no longer talk to you. They don't even tell you they're not talking to you. Just find out that they're not talking to you. And it's interesting because people can do it physically and people can do it silently in the sense where you can physically be in a room and feel like you don't belong here. And no one got to say nothing to you. You just feel the tension in the room. I'm wondering, has anyone ever been left on the outside of something, of a situation, and, and, and you recognize how heavy and how hurtful it is to be intentionally the one that people walk around? And, and think about it, brothers and sisters. How much heavier do you think that situation is when people treat you a certain way and they don't even know you. Lord have mercy. 
or, or, or they treat you a certain way because they think they know you, but they don't know nothing about you. And they just over there judging you, just judging, just judging. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing to be treated differently because of something you didn't do or something that you're not a part of. Sometimes people judge you from a previous background that you've been delivered from. And you're not even there anymore. But all they can do is see you as the version that they last saw you as. And it's just so amazing to me. Sometimes people judge you because of your family. And I didn't do it, but my sibling may have done it, but it ain't me. But the same judgment gets passed to you. Hey, but I'm thinking about it because David is writing Psalms 122 from a place where he knows what rejection feels like. David, David is writing this psalm from a place of gratitude because once upon a time he couldn't get into God's house and to give him praise. And I'm thinking about that especially when it comes to giving God praise because there is a type of praise that you give God that only some people know about because they know if it had not been for God on my side that brought me back I wouldn't be here. And so that's why I never allow my neighbor to be the barometer of how much I give God praise. Because my neighbor doesn't know the details of my history. And they don't know how far God had to go to bring me into the sanctuary just to lift up holy hands. Just to lift up holy hands. You see, David, David knows all too well about being separated from the house of the Lord. And you got to recognize just to be here, saints, just to be here. The house of the Lord, yes. The house of the Lord, Lord, I praise you. The house of the Lord, it, it represents a place where worship and community and God's presence resides. Uh, sometimes you, you just come through the door to get away from all the noise that's trying to remind you of negativity all around you. And, and this is the sanctuary where you expect to receive the peace of God and block out all the chaos that's in the world. The sanctuary. And so, brothers and sisters, if this is the sanctuary then where you should feel accepted by God, if this is the sanctuary where you should feel the blessing of God and, and harmony with God's children. I am of the belief that if this is God's place of residence and he resides here, this is also a place where the enemy wants you to feel rejected. I am convinced about that, that the enemy, he works over time to create barriers. Barriers, barriers. He, he works over time to allow barriers to happen in sacred spaces like this. And when I say barriers, I'm not just talking about a roadblock you'll see on Blue Lab. But there can be barriers that happen psychologically. Where when you come into God's house, the first thing the adversary may do is remind you of that past that you do have. Or that mistake you did make. Or... The adversary wants to keep you in the guilt or the shame or just feeling inadequate to even tell the Lord, I love you. Because how can you freely give God love if you feel like the people around you are judging you and they are quote unquote God's people? Psychological barriers. There are tied to that, amen, certainly emotional barriers. And we have to also be cognizant that the enemy who is moving in the spirit realm also creates spiritual barriers. Sometimes the spirit of heaviness sits on us where we just don't feel like giving God a praise. Uh, we just don't feel like opening our mouth. And uh, uh, we want somebody to 
cultures or cheerleaders into a place of emotional euphoric stating, but realizing that the spirit of heaviness will cause you to miss your breakthrough if you keep your mouth shut. These barriers, these barriers are skillfully orchestrated through the vehicles, catch this, of our feelings. And when you feel excluded, when you feel isolated, when you feel like you're being other than, there's something wrong with you, what the adversary does is he's trying to seek and keep believers away from the very place where they can find strength. Uh, what's the point of going to the gas station on E and leaving with on E? What's the, what's the, what's the point? Uh, especially if the gas has already been prepaid. It's not that we have to pay our way into the sanctuary to give God praise. All you got to do is show up. Uh, all you got to do is just step through the doors. And the Bible says we should enter into his gate with. But how many of us do that? Because there's so much burdens on us just to get through the door. And sometimes our burdens are so heavy, we don't even get out of the house some Sundays. We find reason to stay home and to miss God's day. All the adversary is after is uh, having a connection with your God. He does not want you to have the liberty of lifting up his name. When the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In his house, there is strength. And if you're in a healthy environment, there should be support. And when there is support, brothers and sisters, uh, amen, where two or three are gathered in his name, he's there. I believe there's spiritual renewal. Hallelujah. Where you can leave with victory. Well, the truth is the pain of exclusion comes from a place of feeling left out. And, and I want you to understand that David comes from a line where he should have never been able to cross the barrier and to come into God's house. You see, Psalms 122 falls in the fifth division of the Psalms. And many times we hear people say, I'm going to read the 122nd division of the psalm. Well, that's wrong. There's only five divisions of psalms. And so each psalm division correlates with a, a book in the Pentateuch. So uh, the first division of psalms goes with Genesis. The second goes with Exodus. The third goes with Leviticus. Uh, the fourth goes with numbers and the fifth division where psalms 22 is housed uh, comes from deuteronomy hallelujah so it's important to recognize that david is writing in this psalms uh, correlating with what happened in the fifth book written by moses now you got to recognize that because psalms 22 is by theologians stated as a psalms of invitation someone just say invitation and that invitation stands in direct correlation or in contrast to what Moses wrote in Deuteronomy, which is a, a book or a chapter of rejection. So you have invitation on one side and you have rejection on the other. I'm invited into God's house in Psalms 122, but I'm rejected out of God's house in Deuteronomy chapter 23. So when you read it, understand what David is saying. It gives us the history of why David says what he says. In, in Deuteronomy, let's start there. He says that at the door, there's going to be some doorkeepers. And these doorkeepers are going to check to see if you are qualified to come to church. But when you drop down, David didn't have an issue with his privy parts or having his stones being wounded. But if you look then at what happens after that, amen, that a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord to his what? Someone say 10th generation. And then you go to verse 3. It says, an Ammonite and a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation even unto, someone say, 10th generation. They're not allowed to come to church. And so what Deuteronomy is saying is uh, invitations are rescinded and barriers are placed at the door. I want you to understand this, brothers and sisters. 
because these barriers and these exclusions is even today where the adversary wants you to remain. He does not want you to enter into God's sanctuary and to freely be able to open your mouth and give God praise. Understand that. And so all of us have to recognize what these writers are saying. Now, it becomes really strong when you make this text personal. And I'm wondering in this room, has anyone ever felt disconnected from God? Mm. Only the real brave would answer that question. Uh, I want you to recognize that because uh, this is what Satan will do with every ounce of strength in his body. He wants the believers to be disconnected. And so what he does then, and you got to recognize his game. His game is very simple. He will use issues to block you from your invitation. And here comes the issues. Here comes personal issues. He uses personal issues to make a believer feel as if God doesn't love you. Yes, he does. Satan doesn't want the invitation to get into your spirit to know that God loves you. Your mistakes are greater than you, and God cannot redeem you. Satan will use financial trouble. I don't know if you've been like me and have had your money acting funny, and all you can think about is your change acting strange, and you're wondering, how am I going to get out of it? That worry becomes the door open where the adversary can now induce anxiety in your mind. Because now that's where your mind is rather than recognizing even in this situation, God is still God. There can be, as I opened up, there can be marital issues. And I'll be very transparent. In my first three years of marriage, the adversary tried everything to cause anything to be the reason why my wife and I wouldn't be together. And I share with Faithful, but since Refuge is here, come on into my real life story. Uh, every Sunday, Refuge, do you remember what Sunday was Power Sunday? Third Sunday. And do you know what happened every third Sunday between my wife and I? Let me come down so you can see, I can see the brown of your eyes. Every Sunday I had to preach on third Sunday. Every time I had to preach on third Sunday, without fail, Brother Douglas, there was an argument w without fail. Now, I don't know if I started the argument because Lady Lynch, oh, she's still here. She's putting her head down. Or if she started the argument, but hear me and hear me very well. Satan hates marriage. He hates godly marriages. So whatever marriage you're in right now and your spouse is saved, Satan hates you all. Hear me very clearly. Hear me very clearly. And so brothers and sisters, or even if your, your spouse may not be saved, they don't, he doesn't want them to be saved. Hear me very clearly. And so without fail, every third Sunday, something went wrong. Without fail, Deacon Hurt. And, and we had to recognize that cycle. Because... First Sunday, we're good. <laughs> Second Sunday, we're good. Fourth Sunday and even fifth Sunday, we were living our best life. And, 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 and it, it got so intense. One time, I had to preach on a Sunday, and my wife was nowhere to be found. She says to Diane, I ain't sitting to listen to you. It's getting real silent in here, but I'm just being real. I want you to understand. I want you to understand. I don't, what church did you go to, Lady Lynch? It was an Anglican church, a Methodist church. Just, just don't want to be nowhere near her husband. But we had to recognize it for what it was. And we got counseling. We got support. We had to recognize our communication, our respect for one another, our love for one another, not always trying to be right in a discussion. And I say that very openly because there's no way Uncle Robert, I could preach 52 weeks out of the year with that behavior today. There's no way. And so what the enemy saw, what I didn't see is that there's a future 
bigger than just the third Sunday preaching in front of me. But if I don't do the work in the third Sunday arguments, I would never have the strength to do the work as a pastor today. And I leave that for anybody. Don't let the preacher think like their life is perfect. Preachers and pastors go through it too. But I cannot over-spiritualize the hard work I have to do in the physical realm. And what the adversary does is he flips the script. He allows the struggles of marriage, finances, your personal problem, your past, your history to be so overwhelming that you can't focus on the ministry. And everyone say this, God gave me a ministry. I want you to speak that and declare that God gave every one of you in this room a ministry. But Satan is saying, if you're so stuck in your misery, there's no way you'll have the mental capacity to carry the ministry God has already given you. You have to hear me, saints. You have to hear me. And it's important to understand that because he works in the shadows. He works in the silence. You don't even see him working, but he's working overtime to make sure the believer does not get connected to God. So I live in my worries. I live in my fears. I live in my doubts. I live in my disagreements. I live in my frustration. And I'm living in my mind. And that mind then causes me to be so overwhelmed that when I should enter into his gates with thanksgiving, I'm entering into his gates with terror. I'm entering into his gates with anxiety and angst. I'm entering into his gates with this burden that God has given me the grace to carry, but I'm not even focusing on the giver of grace. Lord, help me to preach it. The Bible says in one Psalms 18 verse 11, Thou will show me the path of life. And you got to say this, brothers and sisters, God wants me to live. I want the church to say it because it's real. God wants you to live. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He gave you life. He, he wants you to live. The Bible says he will show you the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Oh, Lord, I feel something right there. So if I can just get to God's presence. He's going to daily load me with the benefit. If I can just get to God's presence, I recognize that the joy of the Lord becomes my strength. And so even right now, Lord, anoint us with the power to destroy barriers that keep me from your presence. God, help me to have the anointing to remove the barriers that keep me away from where your presence is. And, and brothers and sisters, it's not just a physical building that becomes a sanctuary. Hallelujah. But even in your home, you got to turn your home into a sanctuary. Lord, it's not Sunday, so I can't go to church. But on this Monday morning, I'm going to walk around the kitchen and just tell you I love you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I magnify you. Lord, I lift your name up. I'm going to turn my cubicle into a sanctuary. Lord, you deserve my praises. When you learn how to praise God in spite of, Lord, have mercy. You now activate the joy of the Lord in your circumstance. Lord, I love your name. I love your name. And so the writer says, thy presence is where joy is, the fullness of joy. He said, at your right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. And so I got to recognize that I've been given access into God's presence. I've been given access into experiencing what God wants from me. Now, you got to understand now the backstory why Lucifer doesn't take vacations. Understand us being invited into God's presence is an invitation that Lucifer will never receive again. If you know Bible, if you know the scriptures, the Bible says in Revelations, and Revelation is just simply something that has been revealed, it's out of time. So Revelation actually gives us a piece of the story of humanity and earth that happened before Genesis was even written. What happened was John the Revelator was given a revelation of what happened in heaven before Adam and Eve even got here. Let me help you understand that. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 22, there was a war in heaven. And the Bible says that war was so intense 
that Michael, the warrior angel, and Lucifer clashed. And the Bible says that Michael and the angels prevail. Very specifically, the scripture says a war broke loose in heaven. So if hell can break loose in heaven, hell can break loose anywhere. The Bible says that Lucifer was shot down. But his tail, someone say his tail. His tail drew one third of the stars of heaven with him. So those angels have now become evil angels. Now, when Lucifer was kicked out both in Isaiah and in Ezekiel, the Bible says, O son of the morning, how you were perfect in your ways until evil was found in your heart. So God made Lucifer perfect, but Ezekiel says, Lucifer said, I am going to put my throne above God. How does the creature want to be greater than the creator? And so Satan now has lost his invitation. When Satan loses his invitation, he will never be invited back into God's presence. So the only thing he can do now is to keep as many people from getting to a place where he's not allowed. Lord have mercy. His job right now is to do whatever it can take to stop God's children from going behind the veil where Satan is not allowed. And that's why praise is a weapon you cannot forsake. Satan cannot praise God. Satan cannot worship God, but you know who can? Look at the neighbor and say, but you can, but you can, you can. Your praise is a weapon, hallelujah. Your praise is a shield. Your praise is a strong tower. That's why the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong. The righteous run in and they are. Satan can't stand the name Jesus. James says demons tremble at the name of the Lord Jesus because Jesus is the power that broke Satan's back. Hallelujah. And so saints, you have to recognize you have been given an invitation, an invitation that has your name on it and an invitation that the adversary hates about it. Now, I, I want to go even deeper to, to show you how God plotted to make sure you had a seat at the table. Lord, I praise you for your word. I, I was just reminded of the scripture just last week, but when I read it again when I got home, it ministered to me even deeper. Because in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, I only focus on verse 4, and the Holy Ghost slapped me in the back of the head. He said, read even deeper. Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. Who had blessed us, watch this, with all spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places. My blessings don't come from earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My blessings come from heaven. God handpicked the blessing he placed in my life. Lord, I thank you. That's why the material things of this world should not dictate my emotional state of how I praise God. Because whatever is down here is going to burn up. But what God gives me, he gave me salvation. He gave me deliverance. He gave me victory. What God gave me from heavenly places are eternal and so the Bible says we have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Here is where I always get stuck. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. And the reason why I love that scripture is because before Satan did what he did in heaven, hell broke loose in heaven. We know that. We know Satan got kicked out. We know that. We know that Satan came as a serpent in the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3, tricked humanity. We know that. What Paul tells me in an Ephesians is, before Satan did all that, God already had a plan. 
Lord have mercy. I don't know if you get it the way I get it. God already predestined my deliverance. Oh, Lord, I praise you. God already handpicked my salvation. If you're saved today, God did it on purpose. If you got the Holy Ghost, you baptize in the name, filled with the Spirit, God knew you would be in the number. Hallelujah. And the enemy can't take an eraser and take your name out of the Lamb's book of life. Lord, I praise you. But if your name is there, someone t tell a neighbor, my name is in the book. My name, my name, my name is in the book. The Bible says he's chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Peter said it like this, the lamb that was slain before the foundation. The lamb was already slain, Mother Smith. Jesus already died before sin was ever committed. Lord, I praise you. So that we should be holy without blame before him. And verse 5 says, having predestinated us. Do you know what predestined means, saints? It means it was predetermined beforehand. Before you had a problem, God already knew your purpose. Before you had that family crisis, that issue in your life, God already made a way of deliverance. Hallelujah. And so I don't know who's going through something right now, but if you're in the middle of your fiery furnace, tell your neighbor, he's in the fire with me. He's in the fire. And he's going to bring you out. Hallelujah. He's going to bring you out. He's going to get you out of this situation. He's not going to leave you in there because he's already predetermined your deliverance. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You see, Satan puts sickness in our body, and he puts family trouble in our lives, and he, he allows issues to happen with the car, and uh, the mortgage gets turned upside down, and we think God has somehow forgotten us uh, in the midst of the struggle. But my scripture tells me that even in the middle of the battle, God promised, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He said, Lo, I'm with you always, uh, even until the end uh, of the earth. And that's why I praise him the way I do. I'm not trying to be fancy, trying to get no one's attention. God deserves my praises. He keeps on blessing and he keeps on making ways and he keeps on opening doors and he keeps on waking me up in the morning. And I just want to tell him, Lord, thank you for being a good God. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being loving. Thank you for your mercies. They're new every morning great is thy faithfulness bless the name of the Lord bless the name of the Lord he's worthy of our praises he's worthy of our praises tell somebody I'm glad for the invitation I'm glad for the invitation oh God I praise you as I look across the room most of us are already saved meaning you've already been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus you've already been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost that means that you you gave God a yes when you were invited to the water of baptism when you were tearing at the altar or wherever you were filled you gave God a yes and can I tell you something the yes you gave to God makes you a target for the enemy but tell your neighbor he can't touch me because I've already been chosen he can't block me I've already been anointed he can't stop me because God called my name and so brothers and sisters since you're salvation card cannot be revoked you cannot find yourself separated from God you got to recognize now the adversary wants to rob you of your joy he wants to rob you of your excitement or your reason to open your mouth he wants to take away the reason why you have a reason to give God praise so we focus on the material or the temporal I, I read in John 10 that the thief comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. He, he's trying his best, saints. He's trying his best. But Jesus had a rebuttal in John 10. But I am come. Someone say Jesus came. 
He said, I am come that you may have life and that you may have life more abundantly. I'm going to hold on to my joy. Oh, yes, I am. I'm going to hold on to my peace. Yes, I am. I'm going to hold on to my worship. Sometimes there's things that I can't fix, but the only way I can get out of it is to give God a praise in the middle of the circumstance. Has anyone learned to do that? You can't change it. You can't fix it. You can't turn it around. But I'm going to give God a hallelujah. I'm going to give God a leap. I'm going to give God a turn. I'm going to tell the Lord, while there's breath in my body, you're going to get my praise. Get my praise. I feel chains being broken. I feel the anointing liberating somebody. Living in worry, the blood of Jesus. Walk in your deliverance. Claim your deliverance. Anxiety. Claim your victory, saints. God gave it to you so you can have access access to it and sometimes uh, I may not be able to lay my hands on you but let me teach you what the pandemic taught me you can lay hands on yourself I'm filled with the Holy Ghost I'm baptized in the name and so I speak deliverance over my body I speak it over my soul I speak it over my spirit I've been blood washed in Jesus name Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. You got to learn how to walk through your house and anoint your doorposts. My wife said, I was thinking about it. We should anoint each room. Should we do it with the children or should we do it by ourselves? And I, I told her last night in the bed, I said, we have to teach these children how to anoint certain things at a young age. We got to teach our generation that the anointing is not just at 235 Woodrow Avenue or 37 Winter Street. But if you know God and he knows you, you got his anointing. And use that olive oil. Put it in their shoes. Put it on their backpacks. Put it in their lunch boxes. Put it on the doorposts. But also teach them they can anoint for themselves. And tell the devil, you ain't going to live in my house. You ain't going to live in my space. You ain't going to be in my school. I got the power of God living inside of me. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Oh, God. Oh, let me bring Brother David into the story. You got to understand David's story is our story. David's struggle is our struggle. And so when you hear David, who only has the accolades of being anointed the king three times and being the king of Israel and being a man after God's own heart, he had to go through something to get those accolades. And that's for anyone in this room. If you're going through something, understand that the oil only comes from crushing. You ain't going to have oil if you haven't gone through something. And so if you're going through something, count it as a receipt to your oil being produced. God is getting you closer in prayer through this problem. God is getting you closer in fasting through this frustration. Through this trial, you're learning how to trust him. And just like Brother Andre Crouch said, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned how to depend on his word. How did you learn how to depend on Jesus? You must have gone through something. Oh my God. Can I, can I testify a little bit? Has anyone ever gone through a diagnosis and it seemed as if things would never get better. I was at the eye doctor on Friday or Thursday and then the doctor was telling me about my eye. For Refuge Temple you may not have known but April, May and June I completely lost vision in my right eye. I could not see anything. I developed something called a hydra where water covered my iris and I could not see. I could not put my contact lens in it was so swollen and when I went to the doctor the worst thing the doctor could ever tell you is we don't know what to do 
Jesus. Oh, God. We, we can't help you come back in six months. What's six months going to do? I said, I can sit here and pout over my sickness, or I can still show up to church and give God a praise. And I learn through my eye condition that while I cannot physically see, faith, someone say faith, you walk by faith and not by sight. And so I learned in that that situation how to keep my eyes closed but keep on moving forward I'm still gonna come to church I'm still gonna bless his name I'm still gonna lift him up and the more I praised him the more healing he brought to my body and when I went to the doctor on Thursday they put the contact back in and my vision in my left eye which is the one that was injured got even stronger my left eye is 2020 Lord I praise you for 2020 but by my right eye the doctor said can you see what's in front of you and I began to name the letters she said no close your left eye and use the eye that doesn't work I said my eye that doesn't work is working and I'm telling you I can see for myself who could it be but God but you gotta learn through your trials to keep on trusting you gotta learn through your sickness to to keep on believing and in the middle of chaos you gotta be like David and say I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord at all times his praise David didn't get there by himself David had to go through something and I'm trying to encourage somebody, you got to go through it. And don't allow the affliction to make you forsake your invitation. Even when things are bad, tell yourself, God loves me. Tell yourself, God called my name. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. David at Ziglag had to encourage himself. Nobody was around him. His men were ready to stone him. When you feel rejected by the men you trusted, he got that ephod on him, put the ephod and inquired of the Lord. Which teaches me, saints, that even during afflictions, inquire of the Lord. Even during difficulty, don't lose your connection with God. He said, shall I pursue or shall I overtake? Jesus, the word of God says, God responded back to him and said, without fail, you shall surely recover all. That ain't my message, but that's for somebody right now. In the midst of losing, God said, you're going to get it back. You're going to get victory. You're going to get deliverance. You're going to get a breakthrough. But don't stop inquiring of the Lord. Lord, and don't stop giving him praise in the middle of your struggle can you just learn how to tell the Lord thank you Lord I praise you one song where I said don't wait till the battle is over shout now oh God I gotta rush through this thing Ah, oh, David's history is our history. The rejected one and now becomes the accepted one. You got to recognize David, he comes from controversy. If you know the line of David, he comes from the, the tribe of who? He comes from a praising tribe. But do you know what Judah did to his own daughter-in-law? That's the problem with David. David comes from a genealogy where Judah gives birth to the first generation. Some will say the first generation. Judah gives birth to a son by the name of Perez. Perez represents struggle. Perez represents rejection because something went 
wrong. Perez's mother was a woman by the name of Tamar. And Tamar was Judah's daughter-in-law. Somehow, Perez was born out of illegitimacy of incest because why is a father-in-law sleeping with a daughter-in-law? Whatever the case is, David is coming from a genealogy where he should never have been accepted into the congregation of the saints. And you go down now, you look at this and you recognize the heaviness of why David has a praise. And understand, brothers and sisters, in the detail is also the deliverance. I want you to look at something right now. In the detail is deliverance. The Bible says that Perez was born as a twin son. Someone just say twin. And so when Perez's brother came out first, his, his name was Zerah. Zerah came out first and it was customary to put a red, red ribbon around the baby that comes out first. So here comes Zerah coming out. But as Zerah is coming out of his mother's womb, do you know what Perez did? Perez pulled his brother back. Lord have mercy. And Perez pushed his way out. And he became the first in the trajectory of 10 generations. I put that in my message to help somebody because even when you're born in mess or even when mess finds a way of following you do you still have a mind to press your way into God's plan or do you allow the negative plan to keep you back? I'm wondering, I'm wondering because we look at the negative and it shuts our praise down it takes our hope away Way, it takes our desire to move forward but I pray that we have a Perez spirit up in here that even in the midst of it someone say I'm going to press my way I'm going to press my way I'm going to press my way and so as we read in Ruth I'm closing now the Bible says that Judah gave birth to Perez someone say two and Perez gave birth to Hezron someone say three and Hezron gave birth to to Haram. Someone say four. And then here comes Abinadad. And there goes a Nashuan. And there goes Solomon. And someone say here comes Boaz. Oh Lord I praise you for Boaz. Because we know the story of Boaz. Uh, can I pause real quick? Boaz is so intricate in the story of David because Ruth was in Moab for ten years. Someone just say ten years. Ten generations and ten years. I'm just going to park real quick. Don't look at how long you've been in something. Look at what God is going to do when the time is right. I don't know how long you've been struggling, but tell your neighbor, I think today is the right time. Tell somebody, I think today is the right time. You don't know when God's going to turn it around, but stay ready with your praise. Stay ready with your worship. Here comes Boaz. Boaz gives birth to Obed. And Obed gives birth to Jesse. And I think I got to number 10. And so when you look at 10, here comes David. Why is David so significant? People say that David was number 10. But can I help you as I read the text? David was really number one. Lord, I'm going to help you right there. David represents a generational curse breaker. And I'm just so glad about that anointing because there's certain things that seem to be following the children of God for the rest of their life. But you got to know you've been anointed to break some yokes. Yes, you've been anointed anointed to destroy some narratives. Does anyone know what it is to have a past following them and reminding them of how bad yesterday is? What God is saying in his word is, if you're in the right place at the right time, he will make you the one that turns everything around. 
and the last shall be first and the first shall be last but while you're in line don't lose your praise don't allow what number you are to make you realize you're in the right place at the right time to get a breakthrough from the Lord and that's why David said to Mother Martin I was glad when they said unto me I'm wondering if I got any glad saints in the room David been waiting for 10 generations to get back into the house and when he got there he said ain't nobody gonna stop me from giving God praise I was glad when they said unto me let us go someone say neighbor will you come with me will you come with me into the house I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord is anyone glad this morning that he gave your breath in your body you can come into the house is anyone glad this morning that he gave you strength you can lift his name on high despite all you've been through you can lift up the name of the Lord I'm so glad I know him by his name and he saved me right on time and that's why I praise him Lord have mercy that's why I'll magnify him and you know what brothers and sisters even when depression and anxiety and worry and doubt want to sit on my mind I've learned if I can shake my praise to a level where what's on me has to fall off I recognize that the house of the Lord is a good place to lift my voice I can't praise him in the schoolroom. I can't praise him in the hospital but this is a good place I can lift my voice and magnify my name I'm so glad I can come into his house and magnify him I'm so glad I can lift my voice and praise him I'm so glad I can come into the house and raise my hands despite my past despite my mistakes I keep on telling myself that if I'm alive today God woke me this morning he started me on my way he put food on my table and I'm gonna praise him I'm gonna magnify him I'm gonna lift him up and when the devil tells me that I'm not invited I tell him Satan I was chosen before the foundation of the world so before I got here God called me before I sinned God forgave me before I made a mistake he redeemed me and I'm gonna live like it I'm gonna talk like it I'm gonna praise like it I'm going to worship like it. You can't stop me from telling the Lord thank you because you don't know what the Lord has done for me. When I think back over my life and I think things over, someone said I can truly say that I've been blessed. I'm wondering, does anybody have a testimony does anybody have a thanksgiving can i keep it real i should have been in my grave i should have been counting out but the lord gave me an invitation the lord called my name the lord he brought me out and i think there's somebody that knows what i'm preaching about if it had not been for the Lord on your side, on your side, on your side, on your side, but he brought you out, how are you gonna praise him? How are you gonna thank him? What are you gonna tell somebody? I know what you can say. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, I belong here. I belong here. Tell somebody. I belong here, but preach it like you feel it. 
Say, neighbor, you belong here. 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 Despite what they say, despite what happened, I can lift my voice in the sanctuary and bless his name. Thank you, Lord. I belong here. Thank you, Jesus. I belong here. Thank you, Lord. I'm in the house. I'm trying to let it go, but this is for somebody that's battling struggles. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. Someone say, I got joy. Say it until you feel it. I got joy. I got joy. I got joy. I, I got joy in my soul, in my spirit, in my mind. Claim it, claim it, claim it, claim it, claim it. In his presence, fullness of joy. At his right hand, this pleasures forevermore. One more time, say it to yourself, I belong here. There's a praise that's in the room. There's a praise that's right now. Let the devil know I'm gonna open my mouth and praise God for the invitation. I'm gonna praise God for the opportunity. Can we give God praise right here, right now? Thank you, Jesus. I feel a faithful. I feel a breakthrough. 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 In the name of the Lord Jesus. 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 I claim my peace. I claim my victory. I claim my healing in the name. Oh. Hold on one second, musician. We, we are about to shout. Hold on. Hold on one second. Sometimes a message can be too good to be true, mother. And as I survey the congregation, some people are wondering, do I just let go and give it to God? You know why? You can carry something so long, you get used to it. You get used to how heavy it is to the point where it's not even heavy no more. Is a part of your identity. Feeling left out, feeling forgotten, feeling like you gotta do a hundred things to get God to love you again, that can be so entrained or ingrained into toxic culture of church. But when I read Ephesians, that's not God. Yes, God does count iniquity. Yes, God does see our sin. But my Bible says a broken and a contrite heart. Will he not despise? God don't hate you if you love him. He don't despise you if you're seeking after him. The Bible says if you chase after God, you're going to find. Seek and you shall find. So, so what I'm saying is, there's a praise you've been waiting to release, but your guilt won't let you. Because it's on you, it's on you. There's a praise you've been waiting to release, but your emotional state, I'm tired, I'm, I'm going through, it won't let you to really let go. And why would you go to a gas station on empty? The gas is paid for, 
and you leave on empty. Are you in Liberty Hall this morning? I'm asking the church that. Are, are you in Liberty Hall? So I'm going to give you something to do right now. Everyone take your hand. And, and, and release. Just a release. Whatever is in your hand, learn to let go. But now keep your hand out and just say, Lord, as I praise you, continue to bless me. Hallelujah. Keep those, keep those hands out. Lord, Lord, as I release the heaviness, Lord, I open my hands that you can fill me with joy. Yeah, yeah. Fill me with happiness, Lord. Lord, Lord, fill me. Here it is with your spirit, Lord. Lord, touch me again. Let your Holy Ghost rest on me again, Lord. David said, Lord, create in me. Whoa! A clean heart and, and, and renew, Lord. Someone say, I need the right spirit. I, I need the right spirit. I need the right spirit. Whoa. So if, if you got the Holy Ghost, just lift your hand and say, Lord, Lord, touch me again. Oh, I feel a moving. If you got the Holy Ghost, just say, Lord, Lord, touch me again, Lord. Lord, Lord, anoint me again, Lord. Lord, Lord, revive me again, Lord. Lord, resurrect me again. Lord, lift me up again, Lord. Do you feel the renewal, faithful? Refuge, do you feel the renewal? I feel a moving down the aisle. Oh, Lord. I feel a moving in this sanctuary. Do you feel them, faithful? I feel them reviving somebody's soul. Lord, I feel it. I feel it. Lord, I feel it. If you feel it, find a neighbor. Say, neighbor, that's why you belong here. That's that's why, ha, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why, that's why, that's why, that's why you belong here. That's why. Come on, favor, that's your praise spot. Mm, that's your praise spot, church. Come on, lift him up. He inhabits our praises. If you don't know what to say, just say, Lord, I love you. If you haven't spoken in tongues for a long time, just say, Lord, I love you. He'll change your language. He'll change your lips. He'll get in your tongue. He'll guide you. He'll get in your mouth. Lord, just tell him you love him. Lord, I love you. 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 And Lord, you love me. 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 Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel the Holy Ghost. He's moving. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch my heart. Touch my mind. Touch my spirit. Touch my body. Lord, move. Move again. Lord, move. I'm invited. But help me to act invited. Lord, I belong here. But help me to act like I belong here. Lord, you called my name. Help me to live like it. Help me to talk like it. Help me to think like it. Help me to be your child. Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even right now, if you need the Lord to touch you, the altar is open. Come right now. Thank you, Brother Anthony. Come on down right now. The altar is open. Come on right now. Come on down. Come on down.
desire to be baptized, if you haven't been baptized in the name of the Lord, amen, the pool is ready. Our deacons and our altar workers are ready to assist you if you have need to be baptized. If not, let's go out praising God. Hallelujah. Oh, real, real. Jesus. Let's go! 
Meditate on it. Chew on it. Go back and watch the replay. Because one thing, like he said, the enemy does not want us to be connected to God. So go back and rehearse it over and over and over again. It's good to come in and enjoy the presence of God. But when we leave here, we've got to walk this word out. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the word. 
that you sent with such clarity and such anointing. You have empowered us on today. And Father, we know that you love us. You're not upset with us. You're not mad with us. We receive the word. And we say yes, that we have a place here in your presence, daily living in your presence. And we thank you right now. Continue to bless your man, servant, and his family. Continue to bless your people. Walk with us daily, oh God. We trust you right now. But we're so grateful for the word. It gave us just strength to move from here to there. Hallelujah. We're going from victory to victory. Healing to healing. Deliverance to deliverance. Because of your word. Hallelujah. So we praise you right now. Cover us under your blood. Oh, oh Jesus, cover us. Cover us under your blood. Help us to hide your word. Way down in the heart, Jesus. So we won't sit against you. So we can fight off depression, anxiety, worry, insecurity, and doubt. We heard a word from you this morning, and our soul says yes. Come on, tell the Lord yes. Yes to your word. Yes to your will. Yes to your way, Lord. Our soul says yes, Lord. And we thank you right now. Keep us in your care, under your blood. Until the next time, in the name of in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, look at that neighbor. It's a neighbor right on our shoulder, on our side, on our higher. And pull up our shot, say, I love you. If there's nothing you can do about it.